Oh, okay, hey. Haley, um, I'm going to record this, um, and we're going to hope that it actually records today, unlike yesterday. So 32 is where we are at. All right, you guys going to be quiet so that we can put these in order? So help me out here. There are 28 numbers. We counted them up uh, fifth period. Did we even get some of the 30? Yep, 30 and 31, we're done. Um, oh, no, I was gone. Smallest number, 29. 33. Then? 33. Are you sure it's 33? Yeah. Third. What's after 29? 33? You yeah. might be right. 33, 34? Stupid. 33. 34. 34. Any other 34. 30s? Hold on. Oh, my. Any goodness. other 30s? 40. Four. 44. 46. 46. I think there's two 47s, maybe. Yeah, so 46, 247s. I read them directly below so that I know I have uh, the correct amount at the end. Um, 40, any other 40s? Um, 50s, is there a 50? 50. 50, 53, 54. 56. Oh, there's a 57. Oh, there's a 50. There's a 50. There's a 50. There's a 50. We have already established. Okay. 56, 57. And I think we're on to 60s now, right? Two 60s. 60, 60. 61. Um, there is a 62. Y'all are bad. 63. 64, 65. There's a 67. Are we on the 70s now? 70, 74, 75. I just go right below the other ones. 70, 74, 75, um, 76, 78. And we have three numbers left, I hope. Uh, 80, 83, 90. 80, 83, 90. Okay, there are 28 numbers. With this, we are trying to create a box and whisker plot, which means we need the five number summary. What, what five numbers do we need? Uh, five, Min, four, four trial one, max, four trial two, median, and median, Q1, Q3 is the other one, Luke. Q2 is the median, right? Okay. So those are the, those are the numbers that we need, all right? There are 28 numbers, and I don't want to cross, 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 cross all the way through. So 28 numbers, if I divide that in half, that's 14 numbers over here and 14 numbers over here, right? So I will have two middle numbers, and they will be the 14th and 15th number. Add it together and divide, okay? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 14, 15 is 60 and 61. So the median is? 60.5. Okay. Oh, we forgot to do min and max. 29 and 90 are min and max. Yeah. Okay. Now the Q1, I've separated my, uh, my data into two groups. So 14 in one set, 14 in the other set. If I divide this 14 in half, there's seven and seven, which still doesn't give me uh, a middle number. It's the seventh and eighth number, right? And over here, it will be the seventh and eighth number from the end. Does that make sense that I'm adding together? Okay. So one, two, if it was an odd number, it would just be that middle number. Yep, you wouldn't have to add. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These two numbers right here, 47 and 50, are the average like 48 and a half. Okay. And then the seventh and eighth number from the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seventy, and seventy-four. Seventy-two. Okay, and now I have to make a box and whisker plot. All right. So I start by making like a number line here. Okay, and let's go from let's go from twenty to one hundred, just because it comes out really nice to like divvy it out, right? 20 and 100, and then I separate him in half. What's halfway between 20 and 100? If you're trying to find a halfway 60. point, 
Yeah, if you add 20 and 100 together, that's 120 divided by 2 is 60, right? Halfway between. Okay, what's halfway between 20 and 60? What? 40. What's halfway between 60 and 100? 80. And then I'm going to put little tick marks here for the halfway between those. Okay, so there's that. There's my number line. My All right. My number line looks like, I don't know, like a caterpillar falling off a tree. Bang, it's like what? <laughs> All over the place. Okay. <laughs> 29 is your smallest number, so he's about there. 90 is your biggest number, about there. There's my, there's my whisker parts. Um, 60.5. That looks like two dots. That's going to be the whiskers. 60.5 is there. 72 is here. And 48 and a half is about there. And there is this. Hmm. So what can we what can we uh like say about this box of whisker fly? Uh, uh, it's pretty uniform. Uh, it's pretty symmetric. Uniform. Symmetric is what it is. It's well, kind of uniform, I guess. Uniform doesn't mean the same as symmetric, though. Okay, it's kind of symmetric. Um, now, which uh. Piece looks like the smallest. Uh, you think the fourth one looks the smallest? I think maybe like the second one on mine looks the smallest. I don't know. Does that mean that this second grouping has less numbers than the other ones? What does that mean? They're more spread out or less spread out. Okay, so the same number of numbers. How many numbers are in each one of these four sections? Seven. Seven, right? Seven numbers in each section, just um, some are more spread out than others. But really, they're pretty well good good enough spread, all right? All right, go to the next page. All right, go to the next page. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go to the next page. 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 I'm going to treat you like my three-year-old where I say, Malia, take your shoes off. Malia, take your shoes off. Malia, take your shoes off. Malia, take your shoes off until she does it, right? Go to the next page. Go to the next page. Go to the next page. Look. Go to the next page. Look. Go to the next page. Okay. Sign. Cosine tangent. teacher to be quiet in an inappropriate way. Sign. Cosine tangent. Shh. Here we go. Yeah. Angle theta is the bottom left corner. You're still talking. Be quiet. Shut up, you two. Angle theta is the bottom left corner. We do not have all three sides of the triangle. How do we figure out what this one is? Yep, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, which side is side C? The hypotenuse, which is 30. Okay, um, we'll do 24 squared plus B squared. 24 squared is 576, I think. I did it fifth period. That's the only reason I know. Minus 576, minus 576, and that is 3. Whoop. B squared equals 324. Which equals 18. And if you take the square root of that, it is 18. You're right. 18. Okay, 18, 18. So 18 is that side. All right, now we need Sokotoa. What? Uh, I don't know. So Sokotoa. Sokotoa is like Sokotoa. What? Okay, Sokotoa. I don't want to hear that. Which side is the opposite side? The 18. 18. Which one's the hypotenuse? 30. 30 and adjacent is 24. Okay, we want uh, S O H, opposite hypotenuse. 18 over 30. 18 over 30. Now, before we circle that and say that's the correct answer, let's reduce it. What do they all divide by? Divide by 3. Divide by? Bigger. Six. Nine. Six. Oh. 18 divided by six What's is three over, three over five. Five. Three over five. Okay, now, hold on. Before we move on and do the next one, let's do this instead. Rather than writing them here and then reducing them, let's go over here to this triangle and let's reduce them on here. So let's divide 30 by six. Three, four, five. Three only and four. Triangle. And if we reduce them on here, we won't have to reduce them twice over here. Does that make sense? Well, that's that's true. so cool. Yeah, there we go. So cosine, adjacent to hypotenuse, what's that? Eight. Four over three. Four over five. Four over five, okay. Yeah. 
tangent opposite adjacent? Three over four. Three over four. There we go. Okay. Um, Good. Angels of God. Shh. We don't care. Thirty-four. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! You have to do all six. S nope. You just the three. Find sine, cosine, and tangent. Thirty-four. Solve for x. What is x in relationship to sixty-four? I don't freaking know. Oh, it's, it's, it's opposite. opposite. What's eleven? Adjacent. Adjacent. S O H C A H T O A. Which one are we using? So. 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 What? Tangent. I don't give a literal. Be quiet. Tangent of. 64 equals O A. X over 64. X over 11. X over 11. Okay, let's times the 11 over. X is equal to what's 11 times tangent 64? Big number. Really big number. I don't know. 22.6. Is it 6? Yeah. Why are you judging me by the calculator? You're a cruddy person. 22.6. Write it down. Moving on. Shush, shush, shush. Write it down, 22.6, here we go. I just touched that. Good for you. 3536, we are converting from radians to degrees and vice versa on 3536. What is the conversion? Pi over 180. Yep, pi over 180 or 180 over pi. And you just have to decide which one you're using. So we're going 75 degrees to start with. 75 degrees, I put them over one and make them into a fraction. Do we want pi over 180 or 180 over pi? Pi over 180. Okay, because I want the degrees to cross, or cross out, yeah. right? That crosses, that crosses. Okay, and then I just reduce. You will have pi in your answer. What can you divide 75 and 80 by, or 180 by? Five. Five. No, Five. bigger. 25. 15. 15. 75 divided by 15 is? Five. What? Five. 180 what? divided by 15 is? 12. Twelve. So the whole answer is? Five, five, pi, five, pi, pi. Which then over five pi over 12. We leave it like that. We leave pi in the answer. Okay? Now the other one, we're converting 3 pi over 4 to degrees. So pi over 180 or 180 over pi? 180 over pi because you want the pi's to cancel. And now let's reduce 4 and 180. What's 180 divided by 4? 1 and... One and 45. 45. Okay. So now we just need to take 3 times 45, which is? Um, which is? 135. 135, of course. 135, of course. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Name an angle that is coterminal with 590. Okay. Now, normally, hold on, hold on. Normally, they will say name one positive, one negative, right? But this one just says name one. So you can choose whether you add 360 or subtract 360. 950. 2, or you could subtract. I'm doing 230. You could do a plus 360, minus 360. In this case, it doesn't matter because it doesn't say one positive, one negative. So which would you like to do? 950. Subtract or add. So add. I'm going I'm to subtract. So this one is going to be 230, 230 degrees. That's only one answer. There are a ton of answers. If you want to add 360 four times and give me that angle, go for it. Guys, That's, you should add that will work. like 400 times. Maybe like figure out if it really is an answer. It wouldn't be that hard to figure out. I'll just assign everybody like a number in the 100s. Okay. Well, the only thing that's easy about that, Luke, she'll take the number that you give her, minus 590, and then divide it by 360. And if it comes out to be an even number, then it's true. See? There you go. He's got to figure it out. Not that hard. Sure. Go for it. Okay. Um, 38 I meant to take off of this, uh, but you basically get free points on this. We're not going to find the exact value. I'm just going to have you plug it in. So, what is the value of sine of 240? Negative 0 0.8 Oh my god. Don't screw that one up. That's free points. How do we solve that? Just plug it in. Okay. We're not going to do exact value because I don't want to worry about the table, uh, putting the table on here. 
So just do sine of 240, plug it in. Those should be free points. Don't screw that up. All right. 39 is, is a little bit more work. We have six trig functions that we need to write out. So sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, those guys. Um, and we're doing it for the point negative 3, 4, which is in what quadrant? That's what you're doing, Alex. For the second quadrant. Negative 3, 4. So there's that dot, negative 3, 4. And then what we do, do we do to that? Draw your line thingy. Draw your line. So we have to draw one back to the origin. Your bow tie. And we make bow ties, not hourglasses, right? Yeah. Okay, angle. All right, and let's label these sides. So what are the labels of them? Hypotenuse. Now make sure you label him with negative 3 also. He has to be negative, and this guy is going to be 4. Okay, so what's the hypotenuse guy going to be? Negative 3 squared plus 4 Yep, so you can do negative 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. 25 equals C squared. Jalen, are you going into like a coma? And it's five. Okay, it's a three, four, five triangle, right? Have we talked about three, four, fives in here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, three, four, five, okay. Not really. All right, now we need to find the six trig functions. So sine of theta, cosine of theta, tangent of theta. This is the pain in the butt part. Uh, which one goes with sine? CSC goes with sine. CSC goes with sine. Cosine. What goes with cosine? Well, this I don't think so, but you know what to write down because you'll have this paper, right? Okay, so it's just going to be kind of a pain in the butt to write, but I don't think I have that ready to go for you. Okay, where is theta living? Where does theta live? At zero, zero. This is your angle theta right there. That's where he lives, okay? So let's label which one's the opposite hypotenuse adjacent, right? Four is O, five is H, negative three is A. You're on top of it there, Caden. Good, good job. Okay, label them there. Sine. S -O, hold on. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. It's four over five. Okay, hold on. Shh. Just wait. Negative three over five. Sine. Opposite hypotenuse. What'd you say? Four over five, okay, which means cosecant is five over four. Five over four. We'll do these at the same time. Cosine is A H. What's A H look like? Negative three over five. Negative three over five or five over negative three. Okay, and tangent is O A. Four over negative three. Four over negative three. And negative three over four. Okay, go to the back page. This is the mixed review. This is like the stuff that we've been doing these last couple weeks. Okay? We're almost done. We're almost done. Five left, right? Five left. It's like firing. It's like the opposite of heaven. All right. Write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form. What's slope-intercept form? Y equals mx plus b. Okay, what do you find first? The m, the slope. Find slope first okay find slope first so m how do you find slope what's like the formula it's like 1 over 1 minus 1 minus 1 x is over y x is over y. no rise the other way around over it's rise over run so the rise is the y's and the runs are the x's and it goes y2 minus uh, y1 over x2 minus x1 do you remember that it's the rise values over the run values okay it has to be Y on the top every single time. Yep. Okay. Yep. 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 Now it doesn't per it doesn't so much matter as which one you subtract. So you could do nine minus six and three minus two, or you could do six minus nine and two minus three. It doesn't matter really that much, but you have to have the Y's on the top. Okay. okay. So on the top, what's your Y two minus Y one? What does that look like? Nine minus six. Nine minus six. Sure. On the bottom, X two minus X one. 3 minus 2. So 9 minus 6 is 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, which means your slope is 3. three. Now what? Okay, y equals 3x plus b. And how do we find b now? Yes and 10. No. Yes and 10. No. No. Which one would you like to plug in? 3 and 9. 2 and 6. 3 and 9, 2 6. 2 and 6. So let's do 2 6. Yeah, 3 9. Let's do 2 6. Okay, make sure. That your x goes in for x and your y goes in for y, right? What is 3 times 2? 6. 6 minus the 6 over. B is 0. So finally, y equals 
3x plus 0, or you can write just y equals 3x. Either one of those answers is fine. I will take either one because they're both the same. Right? I wouldn't take the top one. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Okay? I would only take the top one. All right. I wouldn't even take that. 41, they give us an equation kind of like the one that we just wrote. And we want to find a line that's parallel to that one, okay? Before we do that, let's go over here and let's write out what parallel versus perpendicular looks like. Parallel versus perpendicular, okay? If two lines are parallel, what's true? Same thing we do that, y. Slope. Or same same slope. slope. They don't touch, so they have the same slope, okay? What about perpendicular? <laughs> the slopes are Not negative... Same reciprocals. For example, if you need to see examples, what's the negative reciprocal of two-thirds? Negative three over two. Negative three over two. What about uh, negative seven? What's the negative reciprocal of negative seven? One over seven, etc. right? We know how to do those, okay? So those were just examples because on the test, this one's parallel, but on the test I might give you perpendicular instead. I don't remember. So Why? make sure you be prepared for both of those, okay? All right, okay. good? Okay, this is my original function and I want parallel, so I want to use the same slope. <laughs> parallel, same slope. So what does my slope have to be? Three over two, I want to use the slope three halves, okay? So I start with y equals three over two, x plus b. b. And what about the nine that's up here? What's the number? Get rid of it. You don't use the nine. Don't use or don't touch it, okay? And now, how do I find b? Plug in, the plug in make sure you're plugging in the x where the x goes, the y where the y goes, okay? All right, now. 3 over 2 times 4. Yes. This is like 4 over 1, right? You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. 3 times 4 is 12 divided by 2. This becomes 6, right? Okay. Uh, then to find B, subtract the 6. So what's B? Negative 8. So final answer, Y equals? Y equals? 3 over 2x minus 8. There you go. That's my equation that's parallel to that one. Okay. Good? All right, 42. The two methods that you can use are substitution or elimination. Substitution or elimination. Whichever one. Okay. Which one would you like to use now? Substitution. What? Substitution. Elimination. The y part multiplies everything and multiply it by 3. Negative 3. Negative 3. three. I like that. Let's do that. Sure. Well, let's multiply by negative 3. Okay? To turn him back positive, he yeah, needs to be multiplied by a negative. Okay, so let's do that. Let's multiply him through. So he will become negative 12x plus 3y equals Zero. Zero. Now we add them together. Okay? The three y should cancel out. 6x minus 12x. Negative 6x equals 12 and then divide by negative 6. X equals negative 2. Okay? Now we got to plug it back in. Which one would you like to plug into? The top one? Sure. 4 times negative 2 minus y equals 0. Okay? This guy is negative 8. Let me get a different color. Negative 8. So now add the 8. So negative y equals positive 8 and divide by negative 1. So y equals, like Sarah said, negative 8. Okay? Um, and let's write those together as one answer. Negative 2, negative 8. And why do we care about that point? That's where the two lines cross each other. Exactly. Okay? All right, 43 and 44 are both factoring. They're both finding the roots. Are you going to write that down? Oh, my gosh. So Jalen just said difference of squares is 43. Shh. Difference of squares is 43. 44 is a simple trinomial. So let's break down. How do you break down difference of squares? Two pieces. Square root of each. Square root, square root. Square root of x squared. 
x squared is 64 is 8 and 8, and one of them is plus, plus and one of them is minus, equals 0. Yep, so like if x plus 8 equals 0, we subtract the 8 over, x equals negative 8. Okay? x minus 8 equals 0, and we add the 8, so x is positive 8. It just switches the signs, right? We didn't have to really write out all that work if you didn't want to. Okay, this is a simple trinomial, this guy. We break them down into two pieces. Which one are we multiplying and adding for? Multiply for 8, add for Multiply for 8, add for negative 7. 1 and 8. Negative 8, positive 1. Yep, negative 8, positive 1, yep. Equals 0, so that means x equals? Negative 1. <laughs> negative 1, positive 8. That's those guys. Holy cow, last one. We just got done doing these. Oh, these were like the ones that we just got done doing. I don't okay. remember. Equal zero. Hey. How do we do this? I don't know. You don't. I'll leave it. Don't. One and twenty-four. You plug it in the calculator. Oh. But you, it, oh. won't, it won't do the exponents. <gasps> Break them into pieces and then you put them all back six. together. Okay. No, 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 Kyle, no, 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 no. Yes. 24 is 4 and 6, but the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 6 stays, yeah? Okay. All right, when you're doing exponents, you only ever. Uh, four variables. Only ever hang one off. This is how the tabs So two and one. Okay, so x squared and x to the first power. There he is. Shh. We are almost done. Be quiet. Yeah, good. Oh, yeah? Can you go Yeah, All right, the square root of x squared is x, the square root of x just. Stays the square root of x, okay? The square root of y to the ninth. What are your two pieces? Three. Only ever hang one off. Y and y to the? Four. Eight. Eighth. So then you square root. Square root of y to the eighth. Y to the fourth. And the square root of y. Okay, now, I just got in checking these uh, for your class. And I had a couple of you guys just leave your answer like that. Put it all back together. Oh, okay? Man. Don't forget to put y it all back together. So, y to the, on the outside, you've got 2xy to the fourth. On the inside, 6xy. You betcha. Yay. Okay? Don't forget to put it all back together. Good? Finals Friday!